Hey, I'm Dan Thomas, and welcome to my channel for the Newbie Woodworker. Or anyone, really. I'm going to show you how to make this incredibly simple edge guide for routers or circular saws. You could probably even make it for a jigsaw if you wanted to. Using it is simple. Place the front edge right on the line. Clamp it down. Fold back the spacer. And cut right down the line. It's that easy. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to know is how wide to make the spacer. That's the part that folds out of the way. If you're making this for a router, it's the distance from the edge of the base to the center of the router bit. For a lot of routers, you can just measure the width of the base and divide by two. But for this Harbor Freight router, that works okay from side to side, but not from front to back. So if you have an odd shaped router base, consider watching my video on how to make a symmetrical base plate. But you can also figure it out by cutting a short groove. Measure the distance from the edge to the start of the cut and add half the diameter of whatever bit you used. For a circular saw, figure out which side you want to run against the straight edge. Then just measure the distance from the edge of the base to the blade. If you want to be exact, you could add half the width of the blade. But if your blade is anything like mine, it's too thin to bother with. Now use those measurements to set your fence. The more exact you are, the more likely your jig will help you cut right on the line. Cut a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood for the spacer. It doesn't matter how long you make the jig, as long as it's long enough for your longest cut. Then cut a wider piece. Wide enough so you have some room for clamps when the spacer is flipped over. Now it's time to attach the hinges. You could use a piano hinge, which is a long continuous hinge like I used in my shop cabinet. But I have a bunch of these 2 inch hinges lying around, and they work just fine. I used 4, but 3 are probably enough. I'm using a self centering drill bit to drill the pilot holes. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Try to keep the sides together so there's no gaps. Here's a mistake I made. If you center the hinges between the two pieces, like I did, then when you flip over the spacer, the hinges can get in the way. I should have offset the hinges like this, so they wouldn't get in the way. So do it like this, not how I did it. By the way, you could actually build this jig so it has two spacers, one on each side. One side could be for your router, and the other for your circular saw. To use the jig with a router, line up the edge on the center line and clamp it down. Fold the spacer back and make your cut. It doesn't matter what size bit you use, since you're always cutting right in the middle of the center line. For a circular saw, you do basically the same thing. But pay attention to which side of the line you should be cutting on. I also tried out some of these self-closing overlay hinges. When you fold back the spacer, it's raised up a little, so clamps don't get in the way and they snap closed, which helps keep the spacer in the right spot when you're clamping it down. I'm not sure which I'll end up using. Time will tell. This is a great jig, but a lot of times with routers, you're trying to cut a dado to the exact width of your stock, and you rarely have a router bit the exact width. That's where my adjustable router template jig comes in handy. I'll actually be using this jig to help make that jig, so keep an eye out for that build video, which is hopefully coming shortly. That's it, short and sweet, just like me. Actually, that would be more like normal length than grumpy. You know what? That analogy didn't work out quite like I thought it would. Anyway, please give this video a thumbs up if it helped. Leave a comment if you want. Subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to ring that bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks.